Hello everyone, and welcome to the third part of designing my crafting system. In the last episode, we made all the storages for all the different items, and today I want to work on the crafter. So the goal is to find a way to send all those items to the crafter, which will be around here, and we need to find out the correct timings and how to design the crafter. So we will start by how to make the crafter. So here I prepared everything you need to craft one box of repeater. So you need one redstone dust, two redstone torches and three stones. And as I said in the previous episode, to get all the items from one box, we will just burn the box. But you can just dispense all the boxes and expect to have all the ingredients in the correct order. For example, here I have everything for one box of repeater. And if I dispense everything, I go in survival. Here I just have redstone torches because it was dispensed first. And then I will have just the stone, just the redstone. As you can see, everything is not in the correct order. So how do we make sure we get the correct items in the correct order? Well, usually you always pick up the first item that was dispensed first. So here it will be the node block, observer and obsidian. But in this case, since we are dispensing one full box at a time, you will always get one box after the other. So we need to find a different solution. The solution that we will be using is called modular force splitting. So every time an entity is created, it has a number between one and four. So when we dispense a box, we create 27 stacks, so 27 entities. If the first entity has a number one, then the second one will have the number 2, then 3 and 4, and the fifth one will have the number 1 again. If the first entity has a number 3, then it will start from 3 and 4, and then it will go back to 1. So if we dispense 27 stacks of redstone dust, we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, multiple time until we have the 27 stacks. So it will stop here. And then if we dispense the box of torches, the first one will start with the number 4, then it will go to 1. It will then stop at 2, and then we can dispense the box of stone, which will start at 3. So basically, each item will have a number between 1 and 4. The first row corresponds to all the items that have the number 1, then the second row to all of the items that have the number 2, then 3 and 4. But how will it help us to know all of this? Well, now we will use the modular force splitting method to regroup all of the items that have the number 1 together, all of the items that have the number 2 together. So we will create four different groups. And if we send those four groups into a chunk border, now instead of receiving first the first items that were dispensed, which will be the rest and dust, we will first pick up all the items that have the number 1, and then all the items that have the number 2 which means in the first batch we will pick up redstone dust, torches and stone which will be enough to start crafting some repeaters. So this is the machine we will use. At the bottom we will receive all the boxes that will be launched with the slime block into here with the scaffolding. Here we have a dispenser with a lava bucket to destroy all the boxes. And then we will first push all the items in that direction and then on this direction. And here we have a bubble column which goes through a sub chunk border, which is the blue line here. This machine is based on the crafter by Andrews. I will link his video in the description. I just remade the wiring myself. So I can show you how it works. Here we have all the ingredients. So we will dispense them in the same order that we did here. So now everything is here. Here we will trigger the pistons and the lava dispenser with the correct timing. So now we have burned the boxes but not the items. First, we'll need to open this trapdoor. 
and push the items in that direction. Then we will need to push them in that direction. Now everything is at the same place. And that's how we regroup all the stacks that have the same ideas together. Now I will freeze the game and open this trapdoor. And here we can clearly see in the water stream we have four different groups. And the first group that will cross the subtram border will be the first group that we pick up. And now we can pick up everything in survival. So the first item we picked up is the rest and dust on the bottom left and we have six of them which correspond to the group number four. Then we have seven stacks of torches, seven stacks of stone and again seven stacks of torches and the rest is all stone. And as you can see the player inventory can only contain 36 stacks. So here we have a few items that you can have in the first batch. But you can still have 5 different items in total. Here we had 6 different items and we only had a few stacks that the player could not have in the first batch. So for each item that we will have in this system, we will need to make sure that in the first 5 boxes we have all the different ingredients that we will need to craft it. And after adding all the wiring necessary, this is the final machine. So we just need to input the boxes here. And then you can press this node block. Okay, so I've added the crafter in the system. So this is how it looks. And then all the items are sent up to the player, which will be here with a crafting table in front of him. And I also added another crafter because for some items, those one, we don't need to distribute them in the correct order because we just need one item type for each. So for those I just have an AGMT crafter which I took from the AGMT crafting station by Common Leo. And here I have the system to change the water stream. So if I select this crafter, this line will turn on and all the items will go here. Now all the items that we need will be sent to this water stream here. So my first idea was to have a water stream from each dropper to this one, but then it takes too much time for the items that are really far away, like this one. So instead I decided to use some dropper line from here to there, and then a water stream. So I will use this type of dropper line to send all the boxes in this water stream. This way the time between the first and the last box to arrive is quite short. This means that the time between each box that I can craft is also short. And now I need to connect those dropper line to this room. In the first episode we made this. And here one line corresponds to one item. So we have 18 different items here. So we need to connect each line at the bottom to each storage. And for that I will just use some observers and rails. So I just need to do that for each line and connect it to each storage. And we also need to make sure that the delay between the start here and the end at the dropper is the same for each storage. And to transport the signal to the further storage, I will use some instant ray line. Now I think that it's better if I directly show you the end result. So it will be easier for you to understand. Okay, this is the end result. So we have some normal ray lines and some instant ray lines. And we can't really have two instant ray lines next to each other. So that's why we have some gaps here. And everything is connected to those dropper lines. We have all of those here and those two one here for the chest and resin torches. And now we can check that all the droppers are in sync.
and all the boxes are dispensed at the same time. So this panel is connected to the ROM that I showed in the first episode and this one is directly connected to different ray lines which are directly connected to the ingredient needed. And we also have a clock here of 8 game tick for most of the items. For some of them, like this one, it sticks. It's a 16 game tick clock and for the planks it's 32 game ticks. So I can have one box every 8 game tick. Because each box of logs gives 4 boxes of planks. I will show you at the end of the video how to use this general crafter. And in the meantime, I will talk about the piston crafter. For the piston crafter, I will use this machine by Andrew that I found on a storage tech discord server. So this is basically the same one that I showed you earlier, but it's a lot faster. Instead of dispensing one box after the other, here we dispense the nine boxes at the same time. So here all the boxes are dispensed in the same tick, but we use update order to make sure we have the items in the correct order. On this machine, I just expanded the storage, so now I can store enough items to craft 5 million pistons. And at the top, I will need to find a way to have the rest on dust, iron, planks and cobblestone into the right hoppers. And I will need to make sure that they are evenly distributed. At the top of the piston crafter, I will first have a box sorter with 4 different items. And for example, for the spruce planks, I will need to divide them into three different dropper lines. So for that, I will have a dropper line and some hoppers under those. And only one hopper will be unlocked at the time. And every time another box comes through, another hopper will be unlocked. This way the box will be evenly distributed between those three hoppers. And we have the same thing on the other side for cobblestone with four different hoppers. So this is how the piston crafter looks like in the complete system. To turn on the crafter, first you need to turn off the locking line, then stand on this pressure plate, which will turn on the clock. So the fastest clock you could use would be a 20 GMT clock, but here I'm only using a 32 GMT clock, so I don't have to build too many box loaders because once we craft the pistons, they will be sent down into this water stream and into those box loaders. And I use the 6x box loaders by Phil Goodinator. And also all the items that you need to craft the pistons will go here on top of a pressure plate. So if for some reason you stop crafting, the system will stop and your game won't crash. When you want to use the system to craft some pistons, you can just flick this lever, it will turn on this line, and activate the clock and you need to also redirect this water stream here. So now all the items will go to here. On top you can see the input system, so all the box arrive from here, go to the box outer and then go to the storage. And I also added a system here to know when the storage is full, so I have a comparator with an end gate for each item and once the storage for one item is full, it will turn on this line and it will stop the items from being dispensed here. And this line here is connected to some redstone lines next to each other. And to achieve that, I just have a single swing of 14 just after the repeaters. So when one line is activated, it will change to 15 and we just have one here. And at the end of the line, I just retract the block so the signal can go through anymore. But we also have an override here, so when we are not filling up the storage for the piston crafter, the pistons there are still extended. And one last thing I also added to this storage is some comparators, every 10 double chests, so I know approximately how full the storage is. So I have 5 of them, and every one of them is linked to a line. And at the bottom, we just add the signal strength, and at max, we can have five. So here we have five lamps, and we know how full the storage is. And of course, I have the same thing for the piston here. I have a capacity of six million and twelve lamps. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything I want to have for this crafting system. Uh, one thing I changed from the first episode is the clock here. 
I'm not using some comparators, now I'm using a hopper clock and I have two of them. So I have this one which is for almost all of the items and I have this one just for the rails. Because when you craft some rails you always have six at a time and even 16 for the normal one. So I added a slower clock for those. So how it works now is we select one page here and once we turn on the crafter it will send a certain signal strength and it will be stored here. And this will activate the clock which has 10 items in it. And each time the clock moves it will turn on this rail line and extend this piston for a few ticks and it will be enough to remove one signal strength from this. And for the last four items for the rails, here we have a redstone dust which turn off this clock and will turn on this one instead. And this one has 16 items instead of 10. So I can show you the system in action for signal strings of 5. First we turn on this clock and each time we have the composter in front of this comparator the signal strength here goes down by one and it activates this line. So this way it's a lot smaller than before and we don't need to have all those comparators. I also added an off switch here which will retract this piston so the crafter will stop. And here at the back of the storages I also added an end gate so when one of the storage is empty it will turn on this line and turn off the crafter. It will just retract this piston here. The only downside of this is you need to have at least a few boxes of each item to use the crafter. And now it's finally time to see the system in action. So if you want to test this crafting system, I will have a wall download in the video description. If you want to build it, you will need to make sure that it's correctly chunk aligned. And if you are in a single player, you will need a mod to use it reliably. The crafter will still work, but sometimes it can fail. And if you are on a server, it will work fine. Everything here has been tested and worked correctly. The only issue I found is with the piston crafter, which sometimes fail. But I haven't found the issue, so I'm still sharing the world download just in case someone can find it. You can still use it, I use it in my survival world to craft 5 million pistons, but sometimes you will need to stop it and restart it. And if you want to see me build this crafting system in survival, stay tuned for the next video. As always, feel free to ask any questions, and see you in the next video. Bye!